Hey, so before we get into today's episode, I just wanna let you know that today is the last day of the Black Friday weekend sale for the candle shop, noxvesta.com, N-O-X-V-E-S-T-A.com if you wanna check out my candles. MLMs have lawsuits, absolutely, but 16 of them? I guess we shouldn't expect more from a founder that sells tablets you put in your gas tank to supposedly get you more gas mileage. This scam has been avoiding the law and making secret deals and poaching distributors from other MLMs since their inception. You know it's about to be good, and by good I mean awful, when they're paying former Vema sellers millions to get on board. Hello everyone, and welcome to another Multi-Level Mondays. Today, we're talking about Jeunesse, yet another health and skincare MLM. What makes Jeunesse different though is the sheer amount of pyramid schemey type lawsuits that they've been involved in. And there's just an insane amount of lawsuits surrounding this MLM. While I was gathering up research for this company, I found a Tina Truth in Advertising article from three years ago that said they reached four separate lawsuits accusing them of being a pyramid scheme. The way Jeunesse has managed to weather these storms is impressive in a horrifying sort of way. Also, I do want to note that they brought up a defunct MLM called Mona V, but Mona V will have their own episode entirely in a couple weeks. Today, we'll just focus on Jeunesse. Of course, before we get into all that chaos, let's start with the usual, the company history and who's responsible for starting this train wreck. So let's get into it. Randy Ray. Long before starting Jeunesse, Randy had a checkered history. Back then, he was known as Ogale and Randall, though pronunciation sources disagree. We're going with it, Ogale and Randall. And from 1984 to 1985, he racked up at least five legal judgments totaling about $800,000. In 1986, he filed for chapter seven personal bankruptcy. I was able to find these court documents through Tina's website. And if you wanna take a look at my sources, as per usual, those will be available, but they don't really detail Ray's actions. Aside from this, Ray has been involved with quite a few questionable companies such as Fuel Freedom International, another MLM that supposedly advertised themselves as being originally developed by NASA in the 1970s for the space shuttle program. Though no documentary evidence has been offered to support this claim. Fuel Freedom International has got to be one of the most unique I have run across in an MLM. They sell gas pills that when placed in your tank supposedly increase gas mileage by 10 to 20%. ABC News wrote about them in 2006 and stated, one of the latest ads sweeping the internet is a gas pill marketed by Fuel Freedom International. Fuel Freedom International says dropping a $2 MPG cap in your tank with every fill up will increase mileage by 10% or 20%. When ABC affiliate WPVI asked a AAA expert to test drive the pill, results were not as significant. AAA saw no improvement while driving at 34 miles per hour and just a 4% increase in mileage at 65 miles per hour. The company recommended a bigger dose, but when AAA used four pills in the tank, it didn't make a difference. I didn't see anything approaching any of the claims for 10%, 20% or 30% improvement in mileage, said Tom McLaughlin of AAA. The company suggested McLaughlin might have several burn tanks of gas before the pill kicked in. Fuel Freedom International did not return Good Morning America's calls for comment. The Environmental Protection Agency has not tested miles per gallon caps, but it has tested more than 100 other gadgets and additives they say will save gas and has found they do not work. Those kinds of claims, we have yet to find any kind of evidence or additive that can produce that type of result, said Joni Lupovitz of the Federal Trade Commission. Even though I don't have details about the fraud Ray was involved in back in the 80s, this gas pill scam was in full swing in 2006, just three years before Jeunesse was founded. Other sources also called this gas pill additive out as lying to consumers and the state of Florida eventually had to intervene. In 2009, Ray signed an agreement with them under which three companies that he owned, one being FFI and the others with similar names, were not allowed to engage in false or misleading advertising, chain marketing, and pyramid schemes. The case was settled without an admission of wrongdoing and a fine of $100,000. But let's be blunt here. This is very easily worked around. All Ray needed was a new company and he was back in business. He didn't even have to admit to the scamming, so he might as well have gotten just the cutest little slap on the wrist there. To put it mildly, I don't really trust this guy here and I don't really trust he'll create an honest company and especially so soon after proving himself to be a scammer in the first place. 
And as it turns out, that mistrust is justified. In April 2009, Kurt Donsbach, a self-proclaimed doctor who has a history of practicing medicine without a license, warned an audience at the Health Freedom Expo in Long Beach, California. He claimed that nutritionists were in danger of receiving genocide by people who wanted to destroy them and put them aside. He went on to discuss his anti-cancer cocktail. Five days later, he was arrested on charges ranging from grand theft to falsely representing a product as a cure for cancer. However, after he was sentenced, he reconfigured a trust he established in Nevis, a part of the Two Island Federation of Kits and Nevis in the Caribbean. And for those of you who have never seen the episode that I did a few weeks ago about the island of Nevis, simply put, Nevis is a tax haven, similar to how we've seen with Swiss banks previously. But in the world of offshore banking, it's a bottom feeder. The Guardian explains that they specialize in letting their clients create corporations with greater anonymity than anywhere else on earth or almost anywhere else on earth. Some Nevis supporters say they aren't hidden, but simply protected. Unfortunately, this makes them very difficult to deal with for law enforcement because of how they protect scammers and shady individuals as well. This scam doctor used them and to bring things back to Jeunesse, so did Ray. Nevis also does this thing that's called a sugar visa, and it's a program that grants lifetime citizenship to foreigners in exchange for a quarter million dollar donation to a government-backed fund that supports displaced sugar industry workers, or a $400,000 investment in real estate in the Federation. And in 2015 and 2016, three companies connected to Jeunesse were registered in Nevis. The point is, there's quite a lot of questionable activity going on in Nevis. I can't confirm this for 100%. That means that Jeunesse themselves are a questionable company, at least not yet anyway, but Ray is already setting up a lot of red flags for me to see. But let's get back to Jeunesse. What do they sell? And are they just as questionable as their founder? Jeunesse opened in September 2009 and was founded by Ray and his wife, Wendy Lewis. In their About Us video, Ray starts off by saying that he acts like the guy next door despite being a multimillionaire and that poverty is a mindset. Being poor is a financial situation. It's not a mindset. I don't know any of my friends who enjoy the situation that they're in. Just gonna say that. It's incredibly insulting and ridiculous for someone to imply that that's all it is. It's just a mindset and nothing else. Anyway, Jeunesse has skincare and supplements, energy drinks, a weight management system, the typical MLM shillings, really. Wendy claims that she fell in love with network marketing because it allows people of different backgrounds to become anything they want. They named their company Jeunesse because they say it is the French word for youth and they sell youth enhancement systems. They claim to have products with cutting edge science that you can't find anywhere else. And Wendy with a degree in statistics says she's perfect for creating compensation plans. And if it doesn't make sense, she won't do it. This little introduction video tells us a lot of things really. Most importantly, they chose network marketing. They chose to be an MLM knowing full well how it scams people. After all, Wendy studies statistics. So she should know how MLMs fail their distributors and why. But I suppose that doesn't matter when she knows how much it benefits those at the top. Sure enough, just after a few years of being on the market, they saw massive growth. AP News wrote in May, 2018 that, since its inception in 2009, Jeunesse has posted impressive growth, becoming the youngest company in direct selling history to reach $3 billion annual sales in 2015. By the following year, Jeunesse had reached $3 billion in cumulative sales and has added $2 billion to that number in less than 18 months. The company's extraordinary growth has been widely recognized. Jeunesse has received more than 30 growth-related awards since 2014, including five Stevie Awards for fastest growing company of the year. Ranking for the past four years on the Inc. 500 5000 list of the fastest growing private companies in America, ranking on the direct selling news global 100 list since 2012, and receiving the DSN Bravo Growth Award in 2017 for growing annual sales by $2 billion through two years, 2014 to 2016. But is all this money the result of focusing on rapid growth and spreading their products internationally? Or is it the result of a genuine product? Well, let's take a look. Their luminescence line, for example, one of their most well-known, doesn't come cheap. The daily moisturizer is $70. Their rejuvenation serum is about 140. The night cream is 100. You get the picture. If these products are genuinely the best that money can buy, then it makes sense why they'd be expensive. But as far as I can find, Jeunesse isn't as revolutionary as they present themselves to be. 
The Derm Review, for example, says that almost all Jeunesse products use APT200, which stands for Human Adipose Stromal Cell Conditioned Media Extract. Say that five times fast. These are essentially self-renewable cells that are taken from human fat. They've been grown in a lab, so no actual human cells are in the Jeunesse products. However, many Jeunesse programs do contain high concentrations of synthetic fragrance ingredients. There are alternatives you can use to APT200 as well. Derm Review has some recommendations, though I won't list them seeing as I haven't investigated those companies. They also write that they simply can't recommend Jeunesse since not only do they have these fragrances that are inside these skincare products, but they've been involved in over a dozen lawsuits since their inception. And there also isn't substantial research to support the benefits of APT200. I guess when Ray and Wendy said they wanted to create a product line that had the best science could offer, they didn't care about proven scientific studies. All in all, I don't see anything worthwhile or unique about this overpriced line. Many positive reviews are from sellers, many negative ones are from people that call them a scam. So I'd argue that these reviews are quite divisive. Yet the worrying aspect of these products is the fact that they're endorsed by doctors who, in my opinion, have thrown their morals out the window for potentially money. All four doctors on Jeunesse's board state that some Jeunesse products can literally manipulate human genes and cells, saying that they can slow the aging process itself. Here's what some of them have stated specifically. Vincent Jampapa, MD, says, "'Prevention and restoration and regeneration. Our products are really designed to not only treat aging, but to help prevent it and slow it at these early stages.'" Dr. Jampapa goes on to say, "'One of the key focuses of AMPM was to really look at how do we really manipulate the gene clock, but in a natural way.'" And what we found out is plant extracts, herbs, enzymes, if they're the right combinations of things can actually turn off certain of these genes that are negative aging genes and turn back on. For instance, genes that help keep us healthy and strong. So AMPM, we frequently refer that product as a vitamin mineral supplement. And in reality, it's the next evolution beyond vitamins and minerals. William M. Zaleg, MD. Reserve, it will balance oxidation and antioxidation because as you know, we have to balance. So this is the first goal of reserve. The second goal of reserve is to switch on a very specific gene that is called survival gene. Donna Antar, MD. With Zen Body, we created a system that works with the body that enables the body to actually rejuvenate and recover on a cellular level. Nathan Newman, MD. When we are putting these products on our body or taking them by mouth, we're really changing every cell in the body, just like Dr. Giampapa said. We're changing one cell at a time, we're affecting them, and that effect is has a domino effect and it goes much further than the one place that we treat or what product we take. So yeah, I'd argue this is pretty unsettling. It's one thing to say this product is great for your skin, but to see supposed medical professionals walking around on a stage at a convention claiming that they have the cure to aging itself, it just seems wrong to me. It seems really, really wrong. Now, people still debate back and forth about if the products do anything in terms of skincare, and I suppose it ultimately depends on who's using it and their skin type, but the products are honestly the least of my concerns when it comes to this company. Instead, their false claims, lawsuits, and pyramid scheme accusations are what I really wanna dig into. So let's get into it. We'll start with the false claims and work our way into legal action. There's about three massive claims Jeunesse continues to make. The results of their product, the health claims, and the income. So let's break that down. The first problem with Jeunesse is how their before and after photos are occasionally pulled straight from plastic surgery before and afters. Tina actually has a compilation of images that show how these dramatic results aren't due to skincare, but medical procedures. Now, what's important to recognize here is that I can't confirm if it's only independent distributors doing this and Jeunesse simply has not stopped them or told them to calm down, or if Jeunesse has taken part or is aware that this is happening. Either way, it's a massive issue and it's false advertising. In addition, they've made ridiculous health claims over the years, distributors claiming what Jeunesse product lines can cure, alleviate, or treat diseases and disorders. Whether it's from saying their Reservatrol formula fights bacteria, cancer, or helping with heart disease, or that their skincare somehow helps thyroid issues, it's all been said, and Jeunesse for their part hardly seems to care. Tina notified the Florida Attorney General that Randy Ray was in violation of an order against him by making these false claims and even filed a formal complaint against the FTC when they didn't see any substantial changes. 
They've also made income claims that can't be proven, something that we've seen from most MLMs we've covered really. Truth in Advertising states, when discussing the earnings of its distributors, an MLM may not make deceptive use of unusual earnings realized only by a few distributors without running afoul of the law. Likewise, a failure to disclose that the structure of a program ensures that the vast majority of consumers cannot achieve substantial income is deceptive under the law. Given this legal backdrop, it might surprise you, then again, it may not, to learn that Jeunesse does not publish a distributor income disclosure statement. And it and the company distributors are making the following income claims without clear and conspicuous income disclosures. Jeunesse is paying us over a million dollars a year. 2,000, 3,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, you can do it with Jeunesse. It's a proven plan with as many as six streams of income. People are making $26,250 a week, a week. Think of what you could do with that. Average diamond in Jeunesse makes over a million dollars a year. I hit diamond right after my year maker with Jeunesse and this is life-changing. Their income disclosure has confused quite a few people actually and we'll get into that in a little bit. However, while these false claims and deceptive before and after photos were bad enough, we're not even at the juicy part yet. That's their lawsuits. Now, before we bite into all of their many, many lawsuits, let's just take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. It's the best time of the year for deals and boy oh boy has Mint Mobile got one for you. They're offering three months free when you buy any three month plan, which is wild. Considering their regular plans start at only 15 bucks a month for premium wireless service, we're talking unlimited talk, text, high-speed data, everything. Mint Mobile is the first company to sell premium wireless service online only and getting rid of their retail costs, which means you save a ton of money just ordering from home. I've been using them for about a year now, and I have to say it's one of the easiest services to work with. There's no funny business going on. Every time I simply need to pay my bill, I go into the app. I already know what the bill is every time. There's zero surprises. I can pick and change my plan as needed every couple of months, depending on what my usage is. It's just, it's almost too easy. It's almost shocking for a phone company. And for a limited time, you can buy any three month Mint Mobile plan and get three months for free by going to mintmobile.com MLM. That's mintmobile.com MLM. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash MLM. This episode is also sponsored by Felix Gray. A lot of us spend a large part of our days staring at screens, and that means we're all exposed to a ton of blue light, which can mess with our sleep and even cause headaches. And that's why five years ago, Felix Gray set out on a mission to help people create a better relationship with technology. Felix Grey glasses filter 15 times more blue light than other glasses. Plus they offer non-prescription and prescription lenses too, to fit whatever your style or needs are. I have a pair of the Volta frames in black. And one of the things I really like about Felix Grey glasses as well, uh, no matter what you're using them for, by the way, is that the frames are also kind of adjustable depending on which style. So you can adjust them to have for like, if you have a wider or narrow head or for like the bridge of your nose, it's very cool. So it doesn't matter whether you're heading back to the office, back to school or back to whatever, you can count on Felix Gray. Make sure you visit felixgrayglasses.com slash MLM. Check them out now, felixgrayglasses.com slash MLM. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash MLM. Plus Felix Gray Glasses offers free shipping, free returns and free exchanges. felixgrayglasses.com slash MLM. Jeunesse has reached a solution or resolution of some sort with at least 16 lawsuits since they were founded, more than one for each year, a good handful of which are accusing them of being a pyramid scheme. In two of them, Jeunesse actually has been the plaintiff accusing competitors of making false statements. They also even issued a subpoena to Google to obtain the identity of a YouTuber by the name Pyramid Alert to pursue a copyright infringement claim. In one of these types of cases, Jeunesse sued a company by the name of LifeWife for their false, slanderous, and defamatory statements. In another, the company was called WellMed Global, another one of their direct competitors. They've also had issues with contracts and trademarks. As Tina states, Jeunesse is also facing a trademark infringement and breach of contract countersuit filed in April, 2017 by Instantly Ageless LLC. 
The suit, which was filed a week after Jeunesse sued Instantly Ageless on contract issues, alleges that Jeunesse violated the Instantly Ageless licensing and royalties agreement for its facelift serum by, among other things, giving its confidential business information to other companies and for allegedly creating an eye firming gel using its The Ageless formula. It also alleges Jeunesse is in violation of its contract because it is not marketing products in a lawful manner. Instantly, Ageless notified Jeunesse earlier in April that it was terminating its product development and license and royalty agreement with Jeunesse. Another lesser known suit against Juness is one in the matter of safety. When Shifa LMV LLC, an entity which seems to promote awareness of exposure to toxic chemicals and products sold in California, came after Juness. Shifa claimed that Juness violated California's health and safety code because one of their products, the Luminous Youth Restoring Cleanser, contained an alleged carcinogen, Kokomai DEA. Jeunesse settled the case in 2015, paid $6,000 in civil penalties and $17,000 in attorney's fees, and pledged to remove Kokomai DEA from their products. In yet another, a former Jeunesse distributor claims that he was unlawfully terminated from the company, and in another, plaintiffs allege that Jeunesse workers persuaded a man by the name of Richard Nito over $7 million for mysterious and undefined cancer therapy that was worthless. There hasn't been all that much information related to this case online, but according to court documents Tina posted on their website, Richard was diagnosed with lung cancer in April, 2006. He was told through oral telephonic representations that if he underwent their IRT therapy or induced remission therapy, that it would cure his lung cancer. Richard entered into a purported contract to receive IRT at about $600,000. It made him feel sick and failed to prove him with any improvement. So in July of that year, they told him about Omega therapy, which he paid about $6.5 million for. When Richard paid, he was under extremely strong medication and was physically and cognitively impaired. So he was extremely vulnerable. But to these defendants, he was allegedly their golden goose a wealthy dying man they could make promises to. And according to the lawsuit, when Richard ultimately passed away in 2008, his death was only hastened or even caused by the injected doses of this omega therapy. Malpractice, wrongful death, conspiracy to defraud, all of this has been brought against these defendants. And again, as there's not a ton of information about this case online, I can't say for sure if Shuness really had any knowledge or awareness that these despicable scam artists were even doing this. Even so, Jeunesse sure seems to attract distributors willing to do some pretty unsavory, if not downright criminal acts to make a couple bucks. And yet as horrific as those lawsuits are, they aren't even the most well-known. That honor goes to the pyramid scheme lawsuits. The first was filed in July in federal court in Arizona, which names the company, three top executives, and three top distributors, as well as 100 co-conspirators who allegedly enriched themselves by promoting and partaking in a pyramid scheme. The second followed soon after. Tina writes, a second class action lawsuit was filed against the company in December, 2016 with similar allegations, including that the company is operating a pyramid scheme and is engaging in racketeering activities. It also alleges Juness is preying on Chinese American immigrants by encouraging them to sell miracle products to their Chinese families and friends. There were also some shady backend deals involved in these suits. For example, lower level distributors weren't informed that top distributors were compensated to promote the company, a violation of FTC endorsement rules. Apparently on the eve of the FTC bringing charges against Vema, a key figure in Vema's YPR, Young People Movement, was recruited into Jeunesse with a secret deal. Morton, the Vema promoter, was advanced undisclosed sums in exchange for persuading his Vema downline to join Jeunesse, and within weeks, he was held out to the public as having achieved diamond director level without disclosing his deal. Among all this, the class actions also allege that distributors' rewards and bonuses are earned by recruiting others, not sales. The company supposedly flouts Chinese laws by recommending that its Chinese distributors transfer products out of Hong Kong to avoid Chinese import laws. And all four doctors on the company's board of directors have claimed that some Jeunesse products can literally manipulate human genes and cells to slow the aging process and cure cancer. The same four that we mentioned earlier, by the way. They also have these off-book compensation plans like what we saw with Morton. They inflate shipping costs to reap revenues and Jeunesse has fabricated income disclosure statements, which would line up with what we saw earlier about how they released ones to essentially shut Tina up. 
One of Jeunesse's top earners, if not the top earner, is Kim Hui of Newport Beach, California, who essentially confirms this when she explains how she makes money with Jeunesse. And in videos, she said the following. So first thing we've got to do is go out there and recruit. We're building a distribution channel, if you would. And so what we do, the first thing we do is recruit. What do we recruit? We recruit entrepreneurs. And the second thing we do is we teach other people how to recruit because this business is all about duplication. It's not about one person selling all the time because that's linear income, you know, trading time for money. But this business model is about building distribution and about creating wealth. And the third thing we do is teach other people on how to teach other people so that when true duplication happens with wealth, with the money would be, we are paid to build our distribution network. In other words, yeah, you get money from building a network, not from sales of products. The emphasis has never been, and frankly will never be on sales with these types of companies. It just never seems that way because the customers are the distributors. The way to get money is through them, not from pushing your friends to buy a cream or two, but from convincing them to be part of your downline and signing them up to be a consistent customer until they realize the absolute garbage position they've been placed in. When Hui talks about bonuses in another video, she reiterates this and says that it is not to sell the product, but to build a global distribution. I'm not a salesperson, I'm a business builder, Kim Hui states. Sources aside from Truth and Advertising have also spoken up about these shady deals and one writes, a suspected secret non-public compensation plan also rewards top earning network marketers outside Jeunesse by luring them and their multi-level sales team to the Jeunesse team. Under the secret plan, these individuals may be given preferential placement in the Jeunesse pyramid above other distributors who do not receive additional compensation for their efforts apart from the public plan. According to the Orlando Sentinel, even Jeunesse's former president, Darren Jensen, has remarked on this. Jeunesse alleged that Jensen was taking their secrets with him to a new company, but Jensen filed right back and said they were the ones engaging in activities that were unsavory, ethical, and perhaps even illegal. They stated that Jeunesse, quote, attempted to sell products in foreign markets, including China, without obtaining legal authorization to do so, end quote. They eventually settled out of court and Jeunesse never responded to those allegations. There are even more lawsuits with distributors arguing and suing that not only did they not make money, but that they paid Jeunesse over $10,000 to be part of the company. And those lawsuits were obviously settled for undisclosed amounts. An economist, Stacey Bosley, also states in her report about Jeunesse that in her expert opinion, Jeunesse is operating as a pyramid scheme and disguising themselves as a multi-level marketing organization. She writes that the anticipated result of Jeunesse's program is an endless recruitment chain with a strong emphasis on recruitment over sales. At any moment that the scheme is analyzed, analysis indicates that the vast majority of participants will be in a lost position. So Jeunesse is allegedly a pyramid scheme then, but what do we have to back this up aside from the mountains of evidence from former distributors, class action lawsuits, and FTC investigations? Well, we've got their own income disclosure. Jeunesse's income disclosure states that about 65% included on their disclosure made about $245 or more, 14% earned more than $4,350, 2% earned more than $82,000, and the rest all earned less than $245. Yet the actual numbers are also a bit distorted and confusing because Jeunesse themselves claim that they don't track all in-person sales and this is only a small sampling of their distributors. Even those that try to find the positive in Jeunesse admit that their compensation plan and income disclosure is incredibly, perhaps intentionally, confusing. What we can tell is that from what Jeunesse has provided, only 2% of distributors earn more than the poverty line. So is this really a great opportunity? No, it doesn't really seem that way. Frankly, I can't find a single redeeming quality about them. And while that isn't a first, it's definitely upsetting just how shady this company has proven themselves to be. But unfortunately, we're not quite done. See, sometimes MLMs will have charities. And from what I've seen, it often helps them promote their products or their company, but in actuality, the charity does very little. We saw this with Unique especially, and it's come up a few times since then. Sometimes I don't mention it because there is very, very little information about the charity itself. Unfortunately, in this case, there is information. It's just not good to hear. Apparently in 2012, Ray and Wendy established a charity called Jeunesse Kids Foundations, JKF. All foundations are given to WE Children, formerly known as Free the Children. However, 
Up until sometime in 2014, JKF provided all its funds to a different charity, Global Village Champions Foundations. And that's a charity whose founder, Yank Berry, is another man with a rather checkered past. In 2001, he was convicted of bribery, conspiracy, and money laundering in Houston, Texas. The case was ultimately thrown out in 2008 when the main witness was found out to be a liar. Still, he's proven to be quite the controversial figure and the subject of some investigative reports though, so again, take it with a grain of salt. According to Tina, it appears that business dealings between Barry and Jeunesse concerning a product historically sold by Jeunesse called Propectin did not end well. In addition, there is one riddle we couldn't solve. According to JKF's 2013 990 tax form, it gave Global Village Champions a cash grant of $926,585 that year. But Global Village Champions 2013 990 tax form indicates that contributions and grants for 2013 totaled $836,585. Somewhere in the tax form world, $90,000 seems to have disappeared. Now I've got no idea where that 90,000 went, but needless to say, I'm not confident in their ability to run a company, let alone a charity. I guess you could theoretically argue that they're not running one, just donating to a separate charity and sticking their name on it, putting themselves in the position of just being a middleman. Whether it's that, the company, the claims, Ray himself, or any other aspects to Jeunesse, there's been quite a bit shady activity all along the way. And hopefully that will bubble to the surface sometime soon. But with that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I hope you learned something new. And if you did, make sure you're liking, following, and subscribing so you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. Thank you for spending some of your time here with me today. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.